Diddy and Drake are two of the most powerful dudes in the rap game. And when they started beefing, it didn't take long for the situation to get real. So why did Pete Diddy go from making hits with Drake to sending him to the hospital? Today we're breaking down the shocking story behind the scenes. Diddy and Drake started out as friends in the industry. They linked up in the booth for the track Loving You No More back in 2010, which was a big win for both of them. Drake was just starting to become a star in the rap game, so having an OG like Diddy around was huge. They got tight and were homies for years, but in 2014, everything changed. In December 2014, headlines started breaking that Diddy and Drake got into a fight at DJ Khaled's birthday party in Miami. Nobody even knew they had issues before the news came out, which made the whole situation even more shocking. According to witnesses, this is how it all went down. Diddy and Drake were both at Club Live to celebrate DJ Khaled's birthday, and at around 4 in the morning, Diddy sent a security over to Drake's table to give him a message. They told Drake that Diddy wanted to see him outside, and a few minutes later, both crews headed out the back door. There's not any video of what happened next, but they allegedly started yelling back and forth, and that's when Diddy started throwing hands. Some people say he just slapped Drake, but a witness who was at the club told the New York Daily News that Diddy punched Drake three times. A magazine editor named Ray Lemoyne had been at Club Live before it went down, and his homies who were still there told him what happened. It's not clear who his sources were, but he later said Drake definitely got the shit kicked out of him. Reports also said that Drake ended up in the hospital after the fight because he dislocated his shoulder. When the news first came out, a lot of people thought it was over Diddy's girlfriend, Cassie. Rumors were flying that there was something going on between her and Drake, but DJ Sam Sneak hopped on Twitter and said that it definitely wasn't about her. Everyone was trying to figure out what was really going on, and some fans thought it might be related to a video from a few months earlier where Drake and Diddy were on stage together. Drake was performing the track Worst Behavior when his mic stopped working in the middle of the song. Diddy was right there next to him with a mic in his hands, so Drake just snatched it from him and kept performing. Diddy might have been a little pressed about the mic getting ripped out of his hands, but the real issue they had goes way deeper than that. Zero to 100 was one of Drake's hottest tracks in 2014. He dropped it as a throwaway single, but it popped off immediately and started running up crazy numbers. Eventually, it hit double platinum status and reached almost half a billion streams on Spotify. But it turns out that the track wasn't even supposed to be his. A producer named Frank Dukes had started the beat, and he sent it over to Boy Wonder while he was in the studio with Diddy. Boy Wonder finished the beat right there on the spot, but Diddy wasn't really rocking with it. There's no real proof to back up the rest of the story, but this is how it went down according to reports. Diddy didn't know what to do with the beat, so he sent it to Drake to have him ghostwrite his verses. So was it that Drake sent you the song to, I mean, you sent Drake the song to, for him to get on it for you? No, 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 for him to ghostwrite for me. Okay. Yeah. Drake recorded the reference track and sent it over to Diddy to make his own version, but Diddy still didn't want to release it. So since Diddy was just sitting on the song and not dropping it, Drake decided to post his version of the track. It probably would have never been an issue if the track didn't blow up like it did, but after everyone started rocking with the track, Diddy played it during the show and threw some major shade at Drake and told the audience that the song was stolen from him. I'm gonna play this next beat, but I want somebody to get this shit on tape. I'm gonna play this next beat. I gave this shit to this nigga, this nigga stole this shit from me, but at the end of the day, shit is still hard. Play that shit. Drake never spoke on the situation, but he has a strong link to Jay Prince and his Mob Ties crew. Jay Prince is one of the most feared dudes in the rap game and has been running Houston for decades. His son Jazz and him are the ones who introduced Drake to Lil Wayne and got him signed to Young Money. And a few months after Diddy allegedly put hands on him, Jay Prince sent a deadly warning to Diddy. On a track called Courtesy Call, Prince said, let me put these bully niggas on notice by letting them know that Drake is family. Puffy feeling like he can put hands on my family opens the doors for his family to be touched. You reap what you sow. For a while, nobody knew if Diddy really even touched Drake. But Charlemagne the God told DJ Vlad that he knew it was true. Diddy just slapped Drake. Like, where at? Slapped or punched? I heard a slap. You slapped Drake. He was like behind the scenes at, I mean, behind the, behind, behind Club Live. I said, like at the, at the back entrance, back door. A few months later, Diddy went on the Breakfast Club and said that he never put hands on Drake and even said that Drake is his favorite rapper. Now, you know, historically, we've heard about you putting hands on people throughout mm -hmm. the years. Like, what made you put hands on Drake? Um, I did not put hands on Drake. Oh. And I do not want any problems with Drake. Drake is, right now, <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I, I have to say. He's putting in his work. I didn't put. I didn't do nothing to Drake. We not. Drake is my friend. Rap to the zero. That was a total rumor. <laughs> yeah, rap to the beat. The zero to a hundred. They said that was your record at first. Was there any truth to that? Even even there was a clip of you at a club. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a um, zero to a hundred was initially a record that um, you know, was my record, and then you know, there somehow that became you know just a, a misunderstanding because we was working with the same producers. Honestly, 
it was a misunderstanding. Honestly, um, Drake is actually my favorite rapper. Kanye might not be the most reliable dude in the game, but he claims that the fight at Club Live wasn't the only drama Drake and Diddy had. According to Ye, they had another fight backstage at his Yeezy Season 1 fashion show three months after the situation at DJ Khaled's party. In an interview with Lex Friedman, Ye said that Diddy and Drake started some drama behind the scenes and Jay-Z had to step in to break it up. In the fashion show, you had Puff Daddy. At that time, Puff Daddy uh, had beef with Drake. Drake still came to the show and Jay-Z had to break up the fight backstage. After Jay Prince got involved, fans were worried that the situation could go from rap beef to something way more serious. But in May 2015, news broke that Diddy and Drake had squashed it. TMZ broke the news that they had a phone conversation and talked it all out. According to reports, Diddy and Drake realized they had a lot of festivals, parties, and award shows where they'd be seeing each other. So they decided to end all the drama so it wouldn't start messing with their money. Diddy said he never put hands on Drake. But a couple years later, Drake pretty much confirmed that something went down between them. On the track 4 p.m. in Calabasas, he referenced Diddy's album No Way Out and said, They whole demeanor just spells envy. They trying to tempt me. The higher I get, the less they accept me. Even had the OGs trying to press me. Ha 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 ha. No way out because I'm already in it. And a lot of fans thought that Drake's laugh was making fun of the way Diddy laughed on the track Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. Then in 2018, he dropped the track Survival and rapped, taking shots with the GOAT and talked about shots that we send him. I've had scuffles with bad boys that wasn't pretending. Drake isn't the only rapper that Diddy allegedly roughed up at a party though. One year before the situation at Club Live, Diddy ran into Kendrick Lamar at the VMA's after party and started a fight. Kendrick had just dropped his legendary control verse where he called out other rappers of his generation and claimed to be the king of New York, which apparently got Diddy pressed. According to reports, Diddy allegedly tried to dump a drink on Kendrick's head when he spotted him at the party, and that's when J. Cole stepped in. There are all kinds of rumors about what happened next, but nobody knows the real story. Diddy claimed that nothing actually went down, just like he did with the Drake situation. Most people forgot about it fast, but eight years later, Cole dropped a track Let Go My Hand and rapped, my last scrap was with Puff Daddy. Who would have thought it? I bought that nigga album in seventh grade and played it so much, you would have thought my favorite rapper was Puff. Back then, I ain't no shit. Now I know too much. We still don't know how serious it was, but obviously Cole and Diddy moved past the beef because Cole actually featured Diddy on the track. Luckily, Drake and Diddy squashed their beef too before I got out of control. TMZ reported that they just chopped it up over the phone. But last year, French Montana went on The Breakfast Club and claimed that he's the one who helped end the situation. According to Montana, he invited Drake and Diddy to the same party without telling them that the other one would be there. Montana said he's tight with both of them and knew they just needed to talk it out. And when they saw each other that night, they sat down and had a conversation for hours. There are a lot of rumors about that night at Club Live and what went down later. But at the end of the day, Drake and Diddy were able to move on, for now at least. Diddy's a wild dude who even got booked for swinging a kettlebell at his son's football coach. So you never know what's gonna happen when he's involved.